Hello, everybody. My name is Rick McCutcheon. I'm a Dynamics 365 MVP, and I'm here today on this expert panel uh, from MS Dynamics World and DB Sync on the five keys to integrating Dynamics 365 CRM, ERP, and e-commerce. So we've got some real experts for us today, and we're going to talk about you know some of the key factors like buy versus build, uh, the criteria you use in selecting an integration platform how to create a better customer journey with integration and common challenges and pitfalls on integration projects and the role of the Dynamics 365 partner in these types of projects. So let's get started and let's introduce our panel. So uh, hello panel, tell us who you are and what you do and we'll start with Avinash. Uh, thanks Rick, um, this is Avinash. I'm uh, one of the senior executives at DBSync. I wear many hats in the organization, but I mainly work in the capacity as a director for professional services across all our product lines. Um, I've been with the company for more than a decade now, and I've seen us grow from a humble ETL offering to being one of the premier and niche players in the IPaaS market uh, that is recognized by INC 5000 and Gardeners of the World. I come with uh, more than 12 years of experience in integrating system across systems across various um, platforms and, and business spectrums um, uh, and integrating systems from legacy-based systems to on-premise um, to the cloud. So that's a little bit about myself. Okay, thank you, Avinash. Now over to the other MVP on our panel today, Shannon. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shannon Mullins. I'm a MVP of business applications specialized in uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central. Also work with Dynamics 365 sales a lot and uh, very excited to be here. I've done too many integrations to count um, over the years and um, very excited about this topic. And um, I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for Accelerant. Um, we're a Microsoft Gold partner based out of Dallas. And thanks for having me on this panel. Okay, Shannon, now over to you, Jason. Thanks, Rick. So my name's Jason uh, Tromans. I uh, lead the Dynamics 365 CRM apps um, and Power Platform at a company called Techman in the UK. Um, we work with SME businesses, um, all different uh, shapes and sizes, um, and we also have business entry on our belt, so we're full of integration platforms uh, and full of integration projects again throughout dynamics but also third-party tools as well so and i've been in this industry in different shapes and roles but for over 10 years so i've seen a, a lot of challenges in integrations okay thank you and connor thanks rick so my name is Connor. I'm the head of the Microsoft division at DB Sync. Uh, we're a Microsoft Gold partner and actually a preferred solution for integration, both in the accounting and the e-commerce space for Dynamics 365. Uh, you can check out those listings on AppSource. I've personally been helping Dynamics customers find the appropriate integration solution for a little over five years now. This includes everything from legacy Dynamics CRM prior to the advent of 365 to Dynamics GP to NAV uh, and of course Dynamics 365 and its many various versions. So along with working with uh, Dynamics customers, I also help Dynamics partners win more deals when they need to solve the integration problem for their clients. And I think we're going to be seeing Power Platform added to that list soon, aren't we, Connor? Absolutely, yes. Okay, big, big factor. Okay, so the first question, I'm gonna start with you, Shannon. Or actually, uh, yep, sorry, we're gonna start with you, Shannon. Um, so over the past couple of years, organizations went through some tough times with the pandemic. What did we learn about companies that had integrated platforms compared to companies that had still siloed systems and processes? Oh gosh. <laughs> uh the pandemic was a it was just an eye opener i think for it departments uh i would say when at first everything shut down at least in the us all our projects kind of went on hold uh, i'd say for about 40 days and then all of a sudden it was just mass chaos because all these it departments were realizing this wasn't just a temporary um stay order like this was going to happen permanently and they couldn't be on these vpns they couldn't be not connected to their printers they couldn't have integrations happening where no one could be there to run them or 
uh, press the button or whatever those cases may be. And so everybody who was on, still on these on-prem or legacy systems was really in a panic going, how do we get our people remote? How do we get them into the cloud as soon as possible? Um, and it, we, I mean, we still can't keep up. We're that busy. Um, and it's been that way since the pandemic uh, started because everyone wants a fully integrated system now. They want a cloud system. They want something that can talk to e-commerce and their CRM and their ERP. Um, the dynamic stack obviously offers that. Um, and so it's a great solution when folks are looking at how do I integrate it with single sign-on? How do I integrate a system that's ERP that can talk to our CRM automatically? Um, and then using tools like DB Sync where we can pull in data from other e-commerce you know, sites. Um, it's pretty cool. So it's the world's just dramatically changed in the last three years. It's it's hard to believe that we used to work, you know, in a totally different world, but we did. And and it's funny because I remember I remember that time as well, and it was sort of like everybody's going, okay, we've got to email our customers. Who's got that list? Well, the accounting system has the companies, and I think the marketing department may have the customers. So I think they realize all of a sudden the real value of our data. Jason, over to you. What did we learn about companies that were siloed and which ones were integrated? I, I think um, the ones that were integrated, um, especially just like the US and, and many countries around the world, um, we had this furlough scheme where um, we were able to, where we didn't have enough work in the very early stages of the pandemic and everybody was told to stay at home and businesses were told to close in the UK, um, basically reduced demand massively um, for probably a period of three months. Um, since then, like Shannon, um, we we're always busy before, <laughs> we're even busier now. Um, but from our perspective is you, you then left an organization with a backbone of people uh, that were necessary that could keep you running. Um, and from our perspective, uh, we worked with a lot of manufacturers into construction. Um, again, they tried to keep that aspect still going because that's an important part to many economies, especially the UK. We work with a lot of food customers as well. And even though people were told to stay at home, we've all still got to eat and drink. So um, running those manufacturing facilities still required systems, required integrated data. So people had to learn is basically what other, jo other people's jobs were um, and what they did and the ones that had integrated systems that could go and just get the relevant license and go dare i say poke around and and, and learn found it easier um, because the data was there to look at and you could see how it was integrated and you could see what it meant those that didn't we in short for us we ended up being part of their organization even more than ever because we probably knew how they sat together as an integrated operation than they did themselves and that was a problem and clearly now those organizations are trying to rectify that okay thank you jason so connor you must have seen the sales cycle for integration software speed up considerably at that point yeah i kind of echo the same sentiments that uh shannon and jason had there so First, I, I think the pandemic uh, really was a unique opportunity for organizations. And there were like a few common themes that, that came about. Uh, for one, businesses uh, hesitated to make any changes to their tech stack during the initial stages of the pandemic. I mean, that's, that's what Shannon saw, that's what Jason saw, that's what we saw, just kind of around the board. Everyone was, you know, waiting to see what happened. And the other bucket we saw were companies that realized this was the perfect opportunity to fix broken processes. And that included things like adding integration into a stack where you know maybe they didn't have that. Well, now they have the time to address it. Everything sort of slowed down for a minute. Uh, and they looked at it as a unique opportunity to address it. Uh, and then lastly, you know, organizations uh, shifted their business processes by adjusting to the climate. Uh, we had quite a few, you know, retail uh organizations that came to us and said look we've been brick and mortar for you know our entire business but now we realize we need e-commerce e in place and that has to be able to communicate with you know our our crm and our accounting software so that we have an accurate full view of what's going on in the organization so i think those were really you know the three different areas that i saw a direct impact from the pandemic 
Uh, and of course, the companies that you know had integration already in place, I think they realized how valuable that was. You know, having these sort of automations that allow you to do things like work remotely uh, in an efficient way and and not really uh, get caught up in a lot of the same problems that a lot of these other organizations face that had all these siloed data sets. Okay, Connor, thank you. Avinash, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I think. Uh, uh... Uh, the panelists have already alluded to quite a few of these things. You know, if I were to overtly simplify it, um, the companies that did not sort of integrate, you know, uh, failed to scale, you know, so to speak. Uh, obviously, it was a given it was turbulent times. Uh, initially, there was a lot of chaos and, and, and uncertainty surrounding various businesses, you know. But um, if I were to just broadly classify this, you know, the, for some of our customers who, who had integration in the mix, uh, it was more of a relief, you know, oh, wow, you know, at least we have our system still talk, talking to each other. Uh, that meant some of our um, uh, folks had to work overtime. Uh, we did. And we kind of, uh, that kind of helped uh, in keeping these systems talking to each other. For those who didn't, I think we saw more and more requests coming in, at least from a DP sync point of view. We saw our business uh, grow multifold, you know, at least over the last two years. Uh, we had a phenomenal growth. Um, in fact, one of our existing customers, I can probably uh, cite an anecdote here, uh, they were into beverage industry, they were already connected. And one of the discoveries they did, you know, they found, this is in the West Coast, and they figured um, they were able to sell more of their beverages, um, you know, uh, now than uh, ever before. And it meant, you know, the, you know, the uh, the downtime sort of reduced from 10 minutes to five minutes. And that was kind of facilitated, you know, with having these systems, three or four systems connected all the time. So we had to actually, you know, just buckle up, <laughs> put our heads down and, and, and you know, uh, you know, work harder than ever before. And, it, and the results were phenomenal. Like I said, you know, we grew 30, 40% uh, year on year. Last two years, uh, it's been fantastic. Okay, great. Thank you. So our next question, we're going to start with you, Jason. Um, We've been talking about fully integrated systems for decades. So why are companies still challenged with getting a single source of data um, and fully integrated applications? So thanks, Rick. I think uh, if we could solve that question right here, right now, I think I, my life would be a lot easier. Um, but I think um, there's a couple of key things that I, I, I think I want to bring to the table. One is uh, a lot of businesses see integration with business systems as an IT challenge, as an IT department challenge. And the reality is, is it's not. It's, it's not an IT challenge at all. It's a business challenge and who should own that business process of why it should be integrated and what value it brings to the business of being integrated what visibility is needed from this side of the fence to this side of the fence um so i think it's the mentality of uh the business as well uh, as as one point that doesn't help and then secondly um i also think if you then evolve that thought further the it's not an IT manager role or a CIO role, maybe per se, that just purely takes ownership. But then it's a case of who does take ownership. And that business analyst, the systems accountant, the systems manager, as you call it. Now, the role of those type of people isn't really to just know how to press the buttons at the right time is a simple way of describing it. Clearly, it's more comprehensive than that. But what those type of roles and those type of people do is that they bring the departments and the solution together to know how it all hangs together um, and then can help the heads of department or the managers actually bring that, that why you need to integrate and what effect does it have and glue the process together in terms of bringing people on board and, and helping people take ownership of their data throughout the whole process. So I guess those couple of points is why does it always seem to become a challenge or a lot of the time become a challenge if i'm being honest it's a lot down to the people and at the organizations because where they think 
the responsibility lies, it actually doesn't. So we're actually starting to see people with titles, you know, I see them at the user group like CRM manager, right? So they're involved with all the CRM systems and they manage those systems. And we're also seeing larger organizations come up with the chief data officer, right? Who actually owns all the data in the organization because people yeah. are starting to realize that, you know, data is the new oil. It's very, very valuable. So, you know, great points. Okay, Connor, what would you like to add? Why are people taking so long to figure this out? Yeah, so I, th I think it's a good question. Uh, and I think one, one of the main points is, you know, as time goes on, we're seeing more software adoption at an accelerated rate. And that's bundled with, you know, new applications hitting the market pretty much every single day. And it makes it really challenging to control and unify those different data sets. And a lot of the time, speaking from personal experience, you know, one piece of software might work really well for one business channel or one business process. So for example, like sales versus marketing or for B2B versus direct to consumer e-commerce. And in order to have a real 360 view of what's going on in your organization, you need a reliable integration to unify that data set. Uh, and beyond that, you know, building that type of integration, it, it takes a lot of planning. And if you're doing it yourself without the input of a partner or someone who's got expertise in these types of projects, you can end up creating more problems than you had to solve originally. Okay, thank you. Um, Avinash, would you like to add something? Yeah, look, uh, um, I think Jason sort of uh, put it very eloquently. It sort of boils down to the people in the organization. Uh, I have a different perspective. You know, uh, I see more and more organizations adopting. But uh, from a challenge, what's the, what's the, what is that one thing that is holding them back? Um, if I were to look at small and medium-sized businesses, you know, based on all the requests that we get, usually it is uh, the decision maker is having to sort of uh, wear many hats and, you know, running around scrambling. Um, the one question they keep asking is, you know, we don't have an IT or they keep telling us, right? They, we don't have an IT. Can you guys become our extended IT team, right? Our system integrators. So whereas we were sort of, you know, stuck in between the two. So, so we had to sort of rely on um, partners like Techman where we use them as system integrators, right? They are implementing these systems and, and with integration knowledge in mind, they can go about that implementation, uh, you know, in a way that can facilitate integration down the line. Uh, or you slightly move to mid-market, uh, what I've seen is, you know, they're already using these on-premise and legacy systems. And then that is where bureaucracy and other things come into the equation. There's a lot of hierarchies uh, for, you know, when you go through these different channels, decision-making becomes that much harder. So from from my perspective, you know, being a consultant, going into these, you know, these, uh, meeting these customers, trying to do a whiteboard. Uh, so this, this is what I found. Um, uh, you know, again, I would still, uh, you know, say, you know, sort of second what Jason said, you know, it's it really boils down to people having that will, you know, to sort of make these systems talk. And it is, I mean, it's almost become paramount given that it's a connected world. It is about time you make these systems uh, that you're using also talk to each other. Okay. And thanks. people are realizing that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Avinash. Go ahead. So, Shannon, you're a Business Central MVP. So you must run into a lot of siloed ERP systems sitting out there. And, you know, from a perspective, why, you know, a lot of times companies don't really see the connection between the data that's in there. ERP systems and in their marketing systems and in their CRM systems. Why is it taking them such a long time to figure out it's all data and needs to be, you know, one truth for the source? Yeah, I think um, I'm going to allude to what other people have, have said is that usually the people that have to pay for the money, um, the budget to make these systems talk, don't typically realize the value of that data and how how the processes change. Um, so a lot of times I get brought into, I'm, I'm known pretty well in this industry for being brought into complex manufacturing, distribution, e-commerce type situations where, um, you know, I don't implement an ERP system without going back and doing a full business process review. Um, let's talk about what you're currently doing, what that looks like. Um, let's see how the data flows. And then as we go through that, I'm like, wow guys this data is a challenge you know did you know that and usually this is to the executive team right 
did you know that Sally's pressing a button every morning to get the data in and that data is not connected to this data and we don't have data coming in from machines where data could come in from machines and why are we doing all these things, right? Um, and then really we leave that on the hands of the users and the executive team and say, yeah, well, we're gonna have to, to make this data talk, we're gonna have to redefine the processes and it comes down to, well, how much is that gonna cost me? And how long is it gonna take? How easy is it to do? And really I think companies need to reevaluate this and, and not how much is it for that one-time pass of cost because it does cost something to make these systems talk to each other but it's that ROI, right? If you get into a cloud integrated solution that has integrations, and uh, I was on a podcast yesterday and we were talking about this because um, Mark was like, what happens after Dynamics 365? Do you think you know people have a long career in this? And I said, well, if anyone can see beyond the cloud, uh, more power to them. I'm, I did tell him yesterday, I don't think the meta metaverse is gonna be able to do accounting systems. So I think we're safe there, but well, um, where do we go from here, right? It's a good investment. It's a very good investment. <laughs> so I've been in this a long time. And uh, I remember 20 years ago, sitting down with my partner saying, how long do you think this is gonna last? And he, and that was 20 years ago. And we're still at the tip of the iceberg. So I think I think there's there's a lot of work to do. Um, so, so you made some really good points about cost, but what I always told people is eventually you're going to have to do this. And if you keep syncing these data in separate systems, your cost of the day that you have to pull it all together is going to far outweigh the cost of what we're going to do here. So, um, you know, when I get all this data and it's all mismatched and all syncing into itself, uh, it becomes a big, big project. So let's kind of talk a little bit about um, dynamics. And um, we're gonna talk a little bit about sort of what's in the box that comes with dynamics and what can we use? And you know what are the tools that we really need to expand that functionality? So I think we're gonna start this with Connor. Sure, yeah. So you know some of the partners are probably be better equipped to talk more in depth about this uh, from the Microsoft perspective. But, you know, obviously Microsoft does have the Power Platform and within that things like Power Automate and the Dataverse and connectivity is, is pretty central to that. Uh, while it can be leveraged for things like task automation and basic integration, when you start introducing things like accounting and order to cash automation, that's where there's that real need for next level expertise. Uh, beyond that, you know, being able to rely on a partner who's done that level of integration before, uh, as well as, you know, resources and support channels that are well versed in the third party systems you're connecting to, I think that's where it's really critical. You know, things outside of maybe the Microsoft ecosystem that Microsoft isn't going to be too motivated to necessarily support themselves. Uh, so in our case, we work with uh, partners in a few different capacities. So we have some partners who get trained on our platform and are equipped to handle an integration from start to finish for their clients uh, themselves and really just use us as kind of input and support when they need it. Uh, then we have other partners who work with us in a much more collaborative manner. Uh, Oftentimes they come to us with maybe a prospect who might not yet be on Dynamics and as a condition of that purchase, uh, they want to make sure their software communicates with the other systems they already have in place. You know, uh, for like 365 uh, potential uh, 365 sales users, a lot of the times that has an overlap with like the QuickBooks market. And so they're not willing to necessarily, you know, move forward with that new CRM if they don't know that it's going to communicate with QuickBooks. Uh, and then, you know, uh, from there, there's a lot of the time that, uh, you know, partners can be involved in the discovery process. Uh, I think that's really crucial. If you've got a partner who's built out the architecture in your Dynamics instance, uh, we need to work with them and we need to talk with them and we need to communicate with them to make sure that we're, you know, capturing the business process uh, that's going to be most beneficial for their customers. Sometimes that involves some back and forth where they're tweaking things on their end and we're adjusting the mappings or the templates that we already have uh, to be suited. And, you know, in, in the dynamics world, <laughs> you come across everything from uh, fully out of the box uh, systems to folks that are using entirely customized uh, dynamics instances. And th there's a huge role for a partner to be involved in the entire integration process in those cases. 
Okay, Connor, thank you. Avinash, would you like to add anything? Oh, well, I can't begin to emphasize uh, the importance of uh, partners or system integrators as they call, right? I mean, at least from our standpoint, I've, uh, I've seen us sort of grow. The reason we are here is due to some of our partners. They kept giving us all these uh, uh, cues that we, you know, kept picking on uh, from, you know, I've, I've had the luxury of some of visiting some of these uh, retail customers and customers across different uh, geography also. Um, and I've had the pleasure of sort of doing that whiteboard and having these, conducting these workshop sessions. Um, you know, if you were to ask me, you know, we are a product company, we essentially want to remain a product company and we want to build that intelligence into the product. You know, guess what? You know, all of this is done by our partners now as compared to maybe five, six years ago, where I used to go and, and do these workshop sessions. Um, and so we take that intelligence and now we have added that into the product and that is only possible due to partners, right? I mean, uh, I keep saying this all the time. Um, what is usually overlooked, you know, if you're an integrator, you know, having knowledge of uh, the APIs and everything else is a given. But what is overlooked is the functional understanding of these systems and these intricacies, right? A look at Dynamics uh, platform itself. You know, there's GP, there's AX, there's Business Central. You know, all comes under uh, you know Dynamics 360 now. But um, but you know, when you sync out, you know, integrate with uh, systems outside of this ecosystem, right? Uh, what are the uh, necessary stuff that you need to have as you know, or prerequisites that you need to have? All that discovery is done by partners. You know, I keep saying this. You know, we're knowing what to do is everything. Uh, and that is usually taken care of by partners, most more so in, uh, on the you know on, on the dynamics front, what I've seen. So that saves us a lot of time. You know, they come to us saying, "Look, I want these things to be integrated," and, and we know if it is coming from them. You know, there's a trust factor that they've already accounted for all the other uh, systems in place. So, so we just need to know what what is that what is that we need to do. So that saves us a lot of turnaround time and, and, and also that trust uh, is, is a major factor so we can tune our systems to a nicety given based on the information that we already have ahead of time. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Shannon, you're uh, approaching a company and they've got these siloed systems. So what's your yeah, role as so a partner? How do you help them out? Definitely a different perspective here. Um, so we we obviously come at it with a full Dynamics 365 stack. Um, you know, obviously BC is but is my love and my passion, but I also do CRM um, and the sales side and and field service. And so when we're looking at these challenges and going to these um, you know these customers who are either doing an RFQ or just a discovery, really it's looking at it and saying there's nothing we can't do on the Dynamics 365 stack right now. Um, it would be very odd that I would have to go outside of that stack to look for anything um, outside of like maybe an e-commerce store, which, you know, is still pretty popular. Uh, Microsoft's trying to get there, but I don't feel like they're quite there with, with the e-commerce side of it, right? But everything else is really, you know, from an accounting perspective, a CRM perspective, a marketing perspective, it's in one platform. Um, and then we, we, also tried to solve our integration issues initially with the power platform we are doing very complex integrations on the power platform um and and passing data back and forth but again like like connor mentioned there are some integrations with some tools that microsoft just hasn't built the connector or it's very clunky because we're using apis and it's not always the smoothest process um so we've had to use you know some ipass solutions as well um but i have to say that there is no other system that I know of where you have a robust, smooth CRM system like Dynamics 365 CRM, and you have a very, very smooth, good looking ERP system like Business Central, and the two of them can talk together automatically. I have not seen it in the market. As far as I know, it doesn't exist. Um, so I think Microsoft is leading the pack with this full integrated stack. And the more that we can sell that and say, we, we're coming to you with one solution, the data talks, data talks automatically. And now we have a way to pass data back and forth with any other system you wanna bring to the table, um, we can do it. And it's pretty cool um, to solve that challenge with just one platform. Okay, thank you, Shannon. So Jason, why don't we talk a little bit about you know, we're going into these companies and there's a lot of siloed data. How, how can you help them get the data clean? 
into one set, set structure that we can actually use. I think getting the data into a, a, a set structure, I think a, a partner has to advise on, on that structure and also has to understand what's going to be the master and what's going to be the slave. Um, and, and where does the, again, I, I've said it a few times, where does the process start? Uh, and from our point of view, um, data integrity, um, from our perspective, it's it's the uh, the polite way of saying garbage in, garbage out kind of concept. So you can have the the great integration platforms and the integration works, but if people don't respect the quality of data that is actually needed, then again, um, you'll you'll fall down. And I think guiding people on the quality of data so where does it end up throughout the process and what's the minimum requirements for that data set for that transaction whether it's in crm or whether it's business central we see it on both sides having work in both areas uh, and what's the minimum amount of information that we need to take from um an external piece of software that is involving what that business takes for example um, it could be as far as uh, a, a configuration tool in the dynamic space. Um, we don't have a product configurator per se out of the box. If you're a, a manufacturer of, of doors, windows or cars or whatever. And so that tool has to rely on component data. It has to potentially rely on external um environment issues we've got a customer that looks at the weather in that area um in addition to what that components are to how they configure their product that goes on the outside outside of a building um so you're having to take data from different sources and uh, to bring it together and and from our point of view it's it's what what's the value again and what's the structure and where's the master and who's the slave and, and from our perspective, we need to guide that customer. Clearly, any partner that does what we do, um, we're not going to be experts in every piece of application. But what we should know is that ultimately in the dynamic space, CRM and with sales, customer service and marketing and, and business central in our, in our view is the backbone to the organization. The configurators and anything else are complementary solutions to running the business. So from our perspective, we know as an organization and the customers that we work with, we should use our knowledge, use our expertise of the past 30 years that we've been going of, of what's needed and then where what information should be given to us and then guide the customers because we find what we think is important versus what the customer thinks is important can be two quite different things. Um, and we've got to convince with uh, a constructive argument of why we're paid the money to be consultants. We know what we're doing. And we know what we're doing. Now, we won't know everything of everybody's process, but yes. we, that's why we exist as well. And from our perspective, um, it's defining that, that master data. And like I say, Dynamics and the Power Platform and the stack that Microsoft delivers, delivers a heck of a lot, but sometimes, it's one of those where we've got an example where toolkit where Microsoft doesn't quite go far enough. We've got the incoming Shopify integration into Business Central, but that's not integrating that information into CRM. So where am I taking that from? Am I taking that into BC, then into CRM using the standard Microsoft tools? Am I using Power Automate? I, I would potentially want different information from in my CRM from Shopify than what I want inside of Business Central to complete the transaction and ship my order. Because CRM, I need to add value in terms of the recurring customer experience to keep them repeat customer. Business Central is enabling that I can, if I ship product, I can ship that product next day delivery if that's what the but, business does. But you need a common customer data model across the entire system. Absolutely you do. Yes, yes. Okay, so this is this kind of leads into the next question. We're going to put our coaching hat on here, um, and we're going into an organization. What best practice approaches do you recommend organizations working with these siloed systems? In other words, when you get there, where are you going to tell them how, where to start? Like, 
and let's talk maybe some of the challenges that that they're going to have. And we'll start with you, uh, Avinash. Yeah, look, I'm just continuing on what Jason mentioned. Actually, you know, one of the uh, key aspects to you know having an integrated environment uh, uh, is to sort of ensure you know for, to look at the solution in its entirety. What I mean by that is, you know, you let, let's take um, CRM and accounting integration, for example. It's uh, you know you can integrate various systems, but just CRM and accounting itself, you have it's it's uh, important to not look at these processes around CRM versus accounting in isolation. Sort of look at it uh, entire, you know, in in its entirety. You, know, you have all these uh, marketing and sales processes automated in your CRM system, right? And once a sale has happened, you know that system needs to talk talk to your accounting in terms of, look, I need to raise an invoice. So how do you reduce the sales cycle, right? Uh, from from closing uh, an opportunity to getting paid. So how do you reduce that cycle from, you know, as opposed to these people, you know, sharing, uh, exchanging emails versus phone calls versus Excel spreadsheets. Uh, how do you let the system or build that intelligence where it goes into the accounting and it comes back and then the sales pe- uh, person or a rep has, the invoice ready to be sent out and get paid. So thereby, if you just look at order to cash automation itself, um, just defining which system take, just takes precedence over the other. That is what defining master data means for us, right? Which of, which of these systems, you know, is the system of record? Where does the point of entry happens to begin with, you know, in the, in the entire organization? So we then take that into account and then we sort of uh, orchestrate uh, or build a solution or architect the solution in a way, we orchestrate data movement accordingly, right? So from that standpoint, you know, and also look at uh, how are these systems built? Are these, uh, do we have on-premise systems involved? Are we doing on-premise to on-premise or on-premise to cloud? Or is it cloud to cloud, right? And then we go about architecting that solution. So knowing what to do is is everything in our system because guess what? You have all these different processes spread across these various systems anything breaks anywhere at all, you know, integration, you know, or, or an integrator gets blamed. So, so knowing, look at, uh, looking at the solution in its entirety, that is where I would start. And as uh, Jason alluded, you know, uh, defining the master data and, and then what is the, um, and of course, you know, data integrity, which is paramount to any integration, right? So, and lastly, the other aspect is the security aspect. While you're moving data back and forth in all in different ways, how, how are you ensuring security? Are you masking the data, right? And is the data being transferred over the cloud or is it stored elsewhere and then do all the data mashing and then integrating? Are we syncing everything over the cloud? So these are some aspects that we uh, actually touch upon, especially from an integration point of view. Okay, so. These are some common best practices that we uh, right. stick to. Great. So back over to you, Shannon. As a partner, you're walking in with your MVP coaching hat on, and you've got this data everywhere. Where do you help the client? Where do you tell them to start? Yeah. Uh, so it's always a it's a mapping process for us, and it's really digging deep into the ditches, you know. And sometimes that involves getting multiple. This is the non non fun part of my job, but it's getting all the different players um, into the room at some point, um, and then eventually into the room to talk to each other. So here's what I heard from sales. Here's what I heard from marketing. Here's what I heard from human resources. Here's what I heard from IT. And here's what we need in accounting is the end result, right? Because accounting is the end result, data is the end result, and that's where we're getting to. So we got to take all these teams to get to what we want the end result to be. So we work backwards, right? And to get the reports and the data that we need, how are we going to make that integrate? It's not a fun process. And sometimes people are very frustrated because they're like, well, we're just spending too much time on this, but really it's a good investment because you're getting the right people in, you're getting the right mapping done. Um, I do recommend, you know, people as they go through these processes to document the flow of the data, make sure you have good process maps, make sure you understand um, where the source of all your data is coming from, where the source system is, and then where the destination system is going to be and what that destination data looks like so that if you have turnover, which I've seen a lot in organizations where people come into these integrations and they go, I... I don't even know where to start, right? Because there's no data maps, there's no system maps. So map it out well, get the right people in the room. Um, we have one customer that 
they're amazing. They go before we build an integration, they go internally and they have meetings and they do what they call a walk the product document where they do a product walk from beginning inception and manufacturing all the way to where we're selling it, to where we're invoicing it, and then to where we're getting the final data. They'll actually put it together a document for every new product that they launch. Um, and they call it the walk the product type, uh, you know, uh, walkthrough, I guess is a good way to put it. And that's a good starting point for us because then we take that document and say, okay, here's how it relates to systems. Here's how we're going to make the systems talk and work and integrate them together. So mapping and and taking some time and really designing it well is is my recommendation. You know, as you go through this challenge. Completely agree. Visio should be your best friend early in a project. So, uh, Jason, anything you'd like to add from a partner perspective? You're walking in and data is everywhere, and you've got to get them started. So, so I think I I just wrote down the words that. Shannon came out with is right people in the room um, is, is so critical and that's not just necessarily from telling a nice perspective our customer that could be other suppliers that supply other tools that need to be part of this conversation as well because you can then lead into not not just inside of the organization but if there are other tools by other um, software authors, for example, you then get into dangerous territory of assumptions. Yeah, it can do that. Yeah, we can get it to give that to us. And then two weeks later, it can't. And then you go back around the room in workshops and process. I, I think the only other thing that I would add is that what the product is an interesting kind of um, phrase. The 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 from my perspective, we talk about the data everywhere, but I'm going to go back to just a single word that is probably one of the most powerful words that you use as a consultant. Why? Why do you have that data? Why do you need that data moving forward? Why do you need that data pushed to Business Central? Why do you need that data back inside of CRM? So we walk in the process and you're telling me that this data needs to sit here, there, but why what value does it give does it enable you to do your job better quicker more efficient and ultimately does it enable you to serve your customer better if not why do you want it integrated why is it there in the first place so um customers of ours i'm sure get sick of us saying hearing us say why but it's one of the most powerful tools of a consultant Okay, great. And I just want to add one thing too, you know, listening to you guys talk about this brings back many memories, but I did hundreds of Salesforce automation projects. And what I learned after we did all the process mapping, then go to the salespeople and say, what are you keeping on spreadsheets, right? And you'd see these big elaborate spreadsheets show up and go, hmm, they're kind of sitting outside this process, aren't they? Anyhow, Connor, what would you like to add to this? Yeah, so I think everyone uh, made really good points here. And from our perspective, a lot of it just revolves around finding that master data set, as Avinash said, and getting it in an appropriate format that we can then use moving forward. Uh, I think Jason made a really great point about why. Why do you need this data? Do you really need it? That's that's huge because uh, moving, you know, data should only be you know revolved around what's actually usable and what's going to be used and not just what's you know able to be integrated because at the end of the day if there's no function for it it doesn't really matter uh, so if we're tying together you know two disparate data sets uh, that can involve things like uh, updating unique identifiers to tie together things like customers for example while providing a list of say non-matching items to the client so think you know Acme Corp in one uh, data set versus Acme Corp in, uh, Corporation. It's a it's a challenge and definitely something that needs to be addressed. Uh, another common challenge that we see is defining the process prior to kicking off the project. Uh, that needs to be the forefront of the discovery process. Uh, everyone in the organization that's touching the data needs to be on the same page. And, and Shannon, to, to your point, getting everyone in the same room to have those conversations, I think that's of utmost importance. Okay, thank you very much. 
Well, I want to thank our panel today. This was a great discussion on uh, data and synchronization. So we'll each get 30 seconds to uh, give some final thoughts out there. So Shannon, let's start with you. Oh gosh, final thoughts. <laughs> There's a lot that we talked about. Um, I think, you know, my final thoughts are um, something, you know, I think a couple of people have mentioned already that if you're in the process of thinking about making this change or or building integrations and, and mapping out your systems, you know, find a partner that can help you um, you know, find find business consultants who have done these processes before that understand them, and um, have fun with the process. It's it's sometimes ugly <laughs> um, to walk through these processes, but try to have fun with it and and work as a team. You know, it's, it's a great team building exercise to go through these integration type projects, and you know, always use Dynamics 365. That would be my best advice for you. <laughs> All right. Perfect, Jason. Uh, Echo use Dynamics 365. Um, I, I think from my uh, point of view and everything that we discussed, integration can be uh, potentially daunting for people, complex for people or perceived complex. And in scenarios, maybe it can be. There's lots of toolkits out there. Again, within Microsoft and iPass, as we've discussed, and DB Sync guys, I think from my perspective, um, if I look at what we do, how do we de-risk a project? And that can be integration as a project. Phase it. Phase the integration. What's the what's the minimum amount that you can start off with that you can prove that works? And then evolve it. Don't bite off more than you can chew. That would be my closing comment. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Avanash. Yeah, I think since we are an out-and-out -out data integration company, I'll, I'll stick to uh, saying something around data. I think you already mentioned this at the start of the conversation, Rick. Data is the new oil. I think uh, you see a lot of business leaders you know, referring to this being an information uh, revolution of sorts, and data is at the center of it. So if you take care of your data, make it more usable, uh, it'll take care of your business. I'd like to keep it short and sweet. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, panel, thanks for your time. It was a, a great conversation, and I'm going to let Connor close things off today. So, Connor, now that we talked about getting data integration right, tell us how DB Sync can help customers and partners achieve their business goals. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Rick. So we work with tons of partners and customers on helping them get integrated, get their clients integrated. Uh, as mentioned, we've been doing this for you know well over a decade, have many templates that can get you or your clients up and running with integration uh, much more quickly than building it out yourself. And I think that's a huge point. A lot of folks you know, might have the technical resources to do these projects. Um, but the amount of time spent in development, the QA, the testing, the maintenance and upkeep, it's, it's pretty prohibitive for a lot of organizations. Uh, partners, we have a great partner program. I'm happy to walk you through that as well and uh, happy to uh, you know, explain the platform, give you a trial, let you test it out yourself. So thank you very much for, uh, for having us today, Rick. Really appreciate it. And thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Avinash. Okay, thank, thank you. And um, if the viewers have any questions, please uh, add them to the chat and we'll get back to you uh, as soon as possible. So thanks everybody and have a great day. Thanks everyone.